Transliteracy is defined as the ability to write, read, and communicate on a variety of platforms with the help of handwritten, printed, and electronic means. This ability involves two major skills. The first is to combine a variety of sources in order to extract more information from them and use this information later. The second involves critical thinking, that is, the ability to assess the quality of this information and reject the information which uh, is not of high quality or which is not suitable for the purpose. Therefore, transliteracy is new literacy, and it is clear that previous definitions of literacy or illiteracy do not always work. That is, reading a printed text is not the same as reading from a screen, and furthermore, these types of reading do not automatically mean that the reader is able to grasp the meaning. Likewise, Writing with a pen is substantially different from typing because typing requires different skills, such as using the keyboard effectively. And all this does not mean that a person who is able to read and write in a traditional way can uh, extract information from uh, a variety of sources effectively. Publishers of ELT materials seem to have understood this long ago. The learner is now rich not only with the help of printed textbooks, but also through video and audio resources, websites, interactive mobile applications, which in theory make the learner receive information through all the channels possible and allegedly help to learn the material more effectively. That is, uh, the learner can do it on the way to work, in the classroom, by watching a video, by reading an information from the website, and through all the possible means. However, that's where problems start. These problems can be roughly divided into two categories. Technical problems may include a QWERTY keyboard for learners whose language uses the Cyrillic alphabet. Or navigation can be difficult, or the design may be unusual or unpleasant. Such problems are easy to cope with provided the learner has sufficient practice or time to master technical skills or the ability to customize uh, the interface of the electronic product. More serious problems are those related to perception. Our observations in the classroom showed that when learners uh, use many information channels, uh, such problems as dispersed attention, a short attention span, and functional illiteracy are manifested. These problems become more obvious when students progress to C1 level and have to read longer texts write more complicated essays, and make more complex presentations. Here the signs of functional illiteracy become more pronounced. On the slide, you can see the definition of functional literacy as given by UNESCO. This definition states that reading and writing are used by a person to develop himself, herself, or the community. As our classroom observation showed, this was exactly the st what the students could not do. For example, they could not extract information from a variety of sources to use in their essays or other papers. Or, if they did, this information was fragmented and the students could not unite and combine these pieces of information to produce a coherent text. To confirm these observations, we divided a group of adult students, future language teachers, into two subgroups. The subject chosen for the experiment was language of mass media. The first subgroup was encouraged to use traditional techniques and materials, mainly newspaper articles. The second group was asked to use a variety of means and methods, 
For example, uh, they were encouraged to read an article on the news a paper website and post comments or take part in a discussion uh, under the article if these options were available. Also, they were asked to watch accompanying videos or listen uh, to accompanying audio files. Within two weeks, it became clear that the performance of the second group deteriorated considerably. Students complained of a very short attention span and of functional illiteracy, that is, they could not summarize the information that was presented in different sources. It should be said, however, that with shorter texts, for example, news items, both groups performed more or less equally. Analyzing the results, we came to the conclusion that e-resources have two serious limitations. First of all, they mostly suit A1, B2 students, that is, those groups of students that do not have to work with longer texts or any other longer pieces of information. Secondly, a lot of attention is paid to design and functions or options which distract attention from the content and the language. Does it mean that e-resources have to be rejected? No. Transliteracy skills are vital beyond the academic context. People have to use them in real life. Besides, if used wisely, e-resources make English lessons more effective. The solution lies in understanding the fact that transliteracy skills have to be taught. The teacher cannot expect that learners, even the young generation, can start working with a variety of information sources automatically. How can we teach these skills? First of all, students should be exposed to various means and resources gradually. Second, no more than two resources should be used at a time. For example, a text accompanied by a QR quest or any other quest seems a very popular activity with my students. Finally, teachers should not pay a lot of attention to design and technical aspects of resources. The language output is much more important. Otherwise, students will acquire a lot of skills which are not related to language at all. And this is much more unpleasant and dangerous. More about types of literacy can be found in the cited sources.